test, test, test one, two, right there. Is that level okay? A little bit of feedback, still going to keep talking. Right there. Good. Check. Check. Mic check, one, two, right there. All right, perfect. So, um, before, I, before I get into the message uh, this evening, um, God really put this, uh, this song on my heart, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play through this uh, probably three, three times, and then I'm going to open up with a word of prayer before we dive into uh, the last part of our weird series, so... Uh, the song is called uh, Sanctuary, and it's really meant to be um, a song just to kind of bring everybody in uh, into the domain of the creator of the universe. gathered here today in your household, I pray that each and every person here would be able to look deep within their hearts, deep within their minds, and Lord, allow us this time to come to your presence. Lord, there's so many things going on right now, and I pray, Lord, that in everything, we would keep you at the forefront of our minds. Lord, I ask at this time that as I give this message, that you would uh, please speak directly to the hearts and the minds of the people here. Lord, that your words would be heard this evening. In Jesus' name we ask this and pray. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I start off the start off the message tonight with, with that song, Sanctuary. <coughs> because in a time of, you know, unrest... And, you know, last week we just talked about weird. Weird, when normal isn't working, right? The norms of the world, society that we live in, you know, these United States, it's not everything that it's cracked up to be all the time, is it? And how many have heard the phrase, you know, life isn't fair? Life isn't fair. You've heard that phrase before, right? Some of you, you probably have thought that too. You know, life isn't fair. And, you know, with the amount of just injustices that you see on a daily basis, I mean, in the news, you have people, you know, they're, they're, they're killed uh, in, in, in shootings. And then you see good people the, who, who get cancer, who get, who, get, who get all sorts of diseases. Or, you know, those people who, you know, they seem to be throwing, you know, their lives in a negative direction, but yet they still have things, you know, good going for them, Right? You know, in the movies, you see how, you know, those who live, like, those lifestyles are focused only on, you know, looking good and having money and, you know, all of that and all of that and more. And 
when it comes back, you know, to our reality, right? People they live how they want, but there's less and less people that live to glorify the Lord. And on top of that, you know, Christians, we seem to have that kind of difficult life. You know, you walk in any church and if you read some of these prayer lists, right? You know, these prayer warriors, if you go through these lists, right? You walk in any prayer list, okay? And you see that it's just filled with people with genuine prayers on their hearts. Okay, you see things like, please, you know, heal, heal my grandmother. I'm in need of a job right now. You know, I'm struggling in my marriage or with my relationships. And Christians, you know, we have the, we have the specific struggle of living that, striving to live that godly life, right? In a world that bombards you with temptations, distractions, things that are just in place to take you away from God. What's up with that? Really, what's up with that? You know, we're talking about being weird, <laughs> right? Being weird because normal isn't working. And, you know, when you think about being weird, right? You know, I gave some examples last week on how, you know, those people who are weird, they've figured out a thing or two about, about life, you know, how to manage like their money, their relationships, whatever, right? And so today, you know, like I, I, I pose some of those questions like, you know, if, if God's good and everything, you know, why should I not expect that justice be done to the wicked? Right? How come this person who's living their life this way, how come they have it so much better than I do? Right? Doesn't that seem to be the case sometimes? We, don't you feel that way in your Christian walk? But I'll flip it the other way around. Okay? Those who are not Christian, and they look at the Christian and then they say, Oh man, these people have it so, so, so nice together, but my life is so screwed up. Why? Right? We all at some point feel this feeling. Okay, It's not just exclusive to the Christian walk. Some of the most... Uh, some of the wisest people of the Bible, okay, they had these struggles. And they had these struggles because, well... They're human. And a lot of the struggles that we go through today are the same things that they were going through. So, I'm wrapping up this series today. You know, I call it Making a Stand. Okay, Making a Stand is the last uh, message for this series. And this evening, I want to focus on reading Psalms. Okay, Psalm 73. And in Psalm 73, okay, we have a guy. And... This guy is, you know, one of da uh, King David, or King David in the Bible, big, big Bible name. If you don't know anything about him, talk to me because he's, he's got a pretty good story, right? Um, but King David, okay, he had, he had um, a worship leader, okay, this guy's name, um, At uh, As Asaph, 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 I don't, I don't remember how to say it properly, A-S-A-P-H, someone help me out. <laughs> But um, this, this guy, okay, he was a godly man, and he was really gifted in music. And um, for those of you, you know, if you, don't, if you don't know anything about this, I mean, I mean that's not the whole point of my message this, this evening, but this psalm in particular is so real and so personal for this guy, because it reveals the struggle that you and I go through so often. And, you know, sometimes people, we, we, we look at the Bible and then we're just like, man, you know, everything that happened in the Bible, God worked it out, right? No, sometimes you, there are some pretty crappy endings, you know, seemingly crappy endings to some of the things that happened, right? But when we go through this psalm, all right, it's very personal. And, you know, if you want to actually turn there in your Bibles to Psalm 73, actually, um, I'm going to need to borrow one Bible. I am going to need this for later. But 
I have it up. I have this these passages up here on the screen for those of you who would like to follow that way. But I'm going to go and read, you know, the first 16 verses of this psalm. And as I'm going through this, all right, put yourself put yourself in the in the shoes of this guy. Okay, try and immerse yourself in feeling what this guy is feeling. All right. So it goes like this, Psalm 73, verse 1. Psalm Asaph. That's what, there we go. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant, and I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the burdens common to man. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity, and evil conceits of their minds know no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, and their arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay the claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. And they say, how can God know? Does the Most High have knowledge? This is what the wicked are like. Always carefree, they increase in wealth. Surely in vain I kept my heart pure. In vain have I washed my hands, have I washed my hands in innocence. All, day, all the day long I have been plagued. I have been punished every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I would have been betrayed. I, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all of this, it was oppressive to me. Okay. Immerse yourself. Okay. This guy is, this guy is saying so many intellectual truths. Okay, this is something that he knows is going on in his head. But I want to tell you, whether you're a Christian or not, every single person at one point or another is going to struggle with that unfairness. Or that injustice in the world. Okay, here's this worship leader. Okay, right? Here's this worship leader. And the great King David, you know, this guy, one of the most respected, most respected men. Okay, notice what he said in verse 2. He said, but as for, my, as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. Okay, God, I nearly bailed on. Right? I almost stopped following you. Understand that this godly guy who's a leader is saying this. Okay, I, I almost bailed on you. Right? And maybe you've experienced this and maybe you're experiencing this right now. But if you get anything that I say this evening, okay, I want you to know that you are absolutely not alone in this feeling. Okay? How can we overcome and stand firm when life does not seem to be fair. How do we make that stand on the promises of God? How do we do that? How do we do that? Okay, what causes us to stumble in making our stand? Okay, it's the same things that this guy is talking about. And you'll notice, okay, you notice as, you, as, as I read through this, okay, if you think about it, the crux of the problem, you know, is what you believe in here. And what you believe in here. Okay. Oh, there's a good God. Right? And then what you see with your eyes. You see unfairness and injustice. Okay, the two things don't seem to match up. And the problem is, you know, either... The problem is with either what we believe or what we, th we see, what we feel, right? And the next verse, okay, at verse 3, it gives us an indication of what the problem might be. It said this, it said, For I envied the arrogant, and I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Okay, he's saying that he saw the wicked and the things that they had done, and he envied them. Okay? He envied them. 
beginning with this guy's problem, okay? His problem is that he's viewing life through the eyes of sin. Viewing life through the eyes being bound by the devil. Okay, and I say this, I say this because you're familiar with the term tunnel vision? Yeah? Yeah, tunnel vision. When things are going wrong and you cannot see a way out, okay, no matter what people are bringing into your life, all right, no. This is it. This is the end of the road for me. Right? And once you stop battling, okay, this sin or any other sin, okay, you give Satan that opportunity to grab onto the foothold of your life and start believing the lies he tells you. Okay, you know, if you're viewing life through the eyes of sin, you know, I have, this is really goofy, because, you know, it's Yogi, little Yogi Berry, you know, he's going to steal the pie, right? If you're viewing life through the eyes of sin, right, you're only going to carry this perspective that the devil wants you to see. All right, look, look at these. Look at, look at some of these savings. Oh, you know, their marriage is perfect, right? Oh, look at the, all that they have and the way that they live, right? You feel trapped. You feel trapped within yourself, okay? Let me turn your attention to these next couple verses, okay? I'm just going to go through them again. Um, but verse, uh, oh, I think there's a slide missing. I definitely wanted to talk about 4 and 5. One second here. Verse 4. says that they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from burdens common to man, and they are not plagued by human ills. Okay, so now it may appear at times, you know, that the wicked, they don't have anything to struggle from, right? But the fact of the matter is that everybody struggles, right? And when that sin creeps into your life, you now begin to open yourselves to that deception that uh, Satan tells us, right? And the truth may be that, you know, those people who are so wicked, right, they might have a better financial situation than you. They might have better health than you. They might have more fame than you, right? But the lie is that they have no problems. Everybody has a problem. Everybody has problems, okay? When you believe the lies of Satan, okay, you're playing right into his hand. And then you see things that, you, you might even see things that are true, but you force them into the lie. Okay, think about that. Think about that. How easy is it for you to do sometimes? Now I want to now I want to talk about these verses. Okay, verse seven: From their callous hearts comes iniquity; the evil that conceits of their minds know no limits. They scoff and speak malice, and their arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance, and they say, "How can God know? Does the Most High have knowledge?" This is what the wicked are like, always carefree. They increase in their wealth. Okay, now I'm going to stop again. Those who are not following God, okay, they may scoff at you. Okay, they might speak with malice, right? We, we, we talked about, you talked about, you know, being a Christian, how it's weird, right? Anybody who disagrees with you, okay, they can threaten you. They can mock you, you know, but... They will not always be carefree and increase in wealth. Alright? You, you, we take the lie and you draw that extreme conclusion about them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, when we do that, you're making the wrong conclusions about your own life. Your own life and how you're living. Okay, he, he goes on to say, you know, this verse 13. Surely in vain have I kept my heart pure. In vain have I washed my hands in innocence. Right here, he's just, he's just like, man, am I all, is, is this all for nothing? Is, is living my life this way, is it all for nothing? Right? All the day long, I have been plagued, I have been punished every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I would have betrayed your children. And when I tried to understand all of this, 
it was oppressive to me. You know, this is the one verse that I, that I, that I singled out and I underlined. Why? Why? Because when you're trapped within yourself, you can't let God do this thing. That's it. That's it. When you are trapped within yourself, you cannot let God do his thing. All right? This guy is saying, man, it's not worth it. You know, I'm living, I'm living my life according to the book. You know, I'm trying to be as, as pure and as holy as I can. But what did that get me? It, it got me pain. It got me heartache. It got me confusion. Right? And, and, and the unrighteous, you know, they live this ungodly life. And where does that lead? You know, this, all this money, success, right? Listen to how much self this guy is speaking with. The tunnel vision. Right? And I'm certain that all of us have been there at this point. Right? The truth is that when you find yourself in that situation, your view is distorted by sin. Your view is distorted by Satan. And even what is completely true, okay, might not even, might not even speak to us. So is that it? Do you chalk it up and say, I don't get it? <laughs> right? How do you keep going on this journey of life? How do you make a stand for the promises of God? How do we do that? What causes us to stand firm? Is there anything? Now I want to go deeper. Okay, I'm going to go deeper into this psalm. And uh, it continues on like this. It says, When I tried to understand all of this, it was oppressive to me until I entered the sanctuary of God. Okay, until I entered the sanctuary of God. Okay, I played that song before we began. I tried to understand why these people seem to be doing so much better than I am. But then I took a moment of pause to recollect myself with the creator of the universe. You know, David talks about the secret place. The secret place is where you'll find me. Taking the time to come back to God. Now we're in that sanctuary. Now we're in that sanctuary of God. Okay, now we're really meant to come into His presence. Okay, when you begin to do that, when you enter God's presence, okay, you begin to view life through the eyes of faith. Okay, and as God, you know, as God led Asaph, okay, into his presence, okay, Asaph began exercising the faith that he had been given. And as we exercise the little faith that we're given, okay, and you begin seeing life through the eyes of faith, you also begin viewing life from the perspective of God. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's from that perspective that the things of the world, that they begin to lose their luster. Right? It's, it, it's this view that the pleasures of the world, you know, it's not everything it's cracked up to be. Right? You know, if I have, you know, if I have a, if I have a hundred dollar bill, right, and I hold it right up to my face like this, right? It looks huge. Right? But when I put that dollar bill into the proper perspective, I see it for, you know, what it really is. You know, it's, it's tiny. You know, compared to $500, right? It's tiny. Right? Now, while the things that I see, you know, in this world may still have, you know, the appearance of being, oh man, this is so unfair. Right? Or these people are wrong. Or this is unjust. Okay? Seen from the perspective of faith. Seen from the perspective of God. It helps me see that there's an eternal perspective, right? 
It does, it's, it's not worth it to you to be so caught up in the moment that you forget that. That you forget what God has shown you. Right? First, when you're viewing life from the perspective of God, you understand that, you know, these things that you have going on around you, in the grand scheme of things, it's this big. It's this big. <clears throat> All right, look at what he says. You know, I, I you know, I just, I, I put this picture up here, right? We look at this and it's a refresher, right? I mean, this is beautiful, right? Yeah. Taking that moment, taking that moment to stop and put yourself back into the sanctuary. Okay, now let's look at what he goes on to say, right? He, verse 18. Uh, Surely you place them on the slippery ground and cast them down into ruin. Oops. How suddenly, oh my goodness, how suddenly they are destroyed, completely swept by their terrors. As a dream when one awakens, so when you arise, O Lord, you will, despise, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Okay, let me stop right there. Okay, because he said, he said a lot. He said a lot in this, in this, in this passage, okay? At the beginning of the psalm, the beginning of his writing, okay, this guy said how his foot had almost slipped, right? God almost abandoned you, right? But now, now you see this right here. He says, I was senseless and ignorant. I was senseless and ignorant. But now, but now what? I can see the truth of the matter. I can see the whole, I can see the bigger picture, right? Understanding and knowing the hope that we've been given, okay? Because he talks of the verses before, okay? He's talking about eternal life, okay? I have something way better to look forward to than the troubles of this earth, right? Looking at it from that kind of perspective, I mean, some of these things, you know, they're this big, they're really this, they're this big, right? Let me read you something. Let me read you something from Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And if you, if you want to look at this, it's page uh, 844 in these Bibles. But Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. It says, you know, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He, pers he persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Seeing through God's perspective of the bigger picture, the bigger picture of things, right? Sometimes, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not up here saying that, oh, you know, eternity is the only perspective that you need to look at things from. No, that's not what I'm saying up here at all, okay? But having this ability, the God perspective, to see the bigger picture of things that I might not know what the next step is, but I can put my faith in somebody who does. Right? As you see from God's perspective, you not only understand the brokenness within yourself, but you also understand, okay, this guy who claimed to be senseless and ignorant, okay, he saw that his envy was the problem. Right? He saw that his envy was the problem and that he, for, he stopped looking above. He started to rely on self. He started to compare himself to all these other people, right? And I want to tell you that, you know, before I really started taking Christianity seriously, right, you know, I thought, I thought I was pretty good. You know, I thought, I, I, I thought, you know, I had, I had most of the things in place and that I, I pretty much had to 
you know, just kind of go to church every week, and, you know, maybe I wouldn't, uh, maybe I wouldn't participate in, like, some things at school with some friends, right? But that's all I thought I needed to do, right? But then, you know, so many different things have happened in my life up to this point, you know, um, with two parents that have, you know, been through cancer, now I have, now single, now I have a single parent, right? And then me and myself, I, I, I getting so severely ill before, and I gotta tell you, you know, those of you who have, who are much older, more experienced than I am, right? I love hearing your stories. I really do. Because you come back and tell people like me that this little thing that you're, that you're so stressed out about, let me tell you, you know, looking back on, looking back, it's nothing. It's nothing. Right? If you understand what it is to see your own shortcomings, to see your sin, okay, you're given so much more by God and His grace. You're given so much more than that. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Oops. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You will destroy all, all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge, and I will tell of all your deeds. I will tell of all the things you have done for me. All right? God is so good when life doesn't seem fair. God is so good when everybody else is being normal and I'm falling behind being the weirdo. God is so good. Right? And God holds us and guides us and talks to us and He will take us with Him into eternity. God is good. Alright? So when you find yourself, when you find yourself on this Christian walk, going against the crowd, Going against everybody else. Being weird is fine when normal isn't working. It's fine. And you know, maybe you're here today because you're still not understanding. You're still not feeling. You still don't feel like you're ready to make a stand for God. If you feel like you want to stand on the promises of God... Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Be honest with yourself. Okay? Enter into the sanctuary of God. Come into His presence so that you can see through the eyes of faith and from the perspective of God. Okay? God brought you here today to hear this message. God brought me here today to give you this message and to, for myself to hear it. Come into the presence of the God of the universe. If you want to be a little proactive with me, all right? Uh, Psalm 139 in your Bibles, uh, page 433 in these ones. Psalm 139 and verse uh, 23. It says this, it says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Okay, this is the prayer. This is the prayer right here. That if you're wanting to make a stand, if you're wanting to make a stand to be weird, if you're wanting to make a stand to put behind you, the sins of your past. To not let people control you. To not let yourself get discouraged. If this is the prayer for you. To be free. 
Pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. My dear Lord and Holy Father, I pray that for all those who are gathered here today, for all those who are hearing this message, Lord, I pray that you would speak, speak life into the minds, the hearts, and the souls of those who are hearing your message. Lord, I ask at this time if there is anything within us that is holding us back from growing closer to you. Lord, if there are people in our lives, if there are, if there are things going on that are, that, that are taking us away from connecting to you, Lord, I pray that you would reveal them to us in a powerful way that we might come back into sanctuary. Lord, I pray that you would prepare us for the, for the tasks ahead of us, for the different things going on in our lives. And I pray, Lord, at the time that life is just too much, I pray that we will turn our eyes to you. Lord, that we will allow you to, that we will put into your hands what your hands are only capable of handling. And Lord, it's my genuine prayer this evening that each and every person here, each and every person listening, will make that step that they will make that step to want to grow closer to you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray and ask all of these things. Amen.